Hi, it's Elise here at Bowman Library with a whole new Teen Book Spotlight. So, for our spotlight this week, we are kicking off the new year with some novels in verse, okay? And here's what I love about novels in verse, and here's why I think it's a great way to kick off our year, okay? For some of you, it might be something new, okay? Novels in verse are books that are shared in poetry form, and I know sometimes that's a, that's a little, ugh. I'll be the first one to say, I'm not a big poetry person, but a novel in verse doesn't feel, doesn't read like poetry, okay? So don't let it, the looks deceive you of it, okay? But what I love about it is a lot of times they pack a punch, but they're also a pretty quick but powerful read. So if you're looking to maybe jumpstart a new reading goal, maybe your maybe your goal is just to hopefully maybe read more, a novel in verse can be a great place to start. So we have six amazing ones we're gonna take a look at, so let's get started. Our first one is Don't Call Me a Hurricane. So Eliza has lived her whole life on Long Beach Island off the coast of New Jersey. But when she was 12 years old, a hurricane came and wiped out the whole island. Fast forward five years when our story actually really picks up and Eliza and her friends are on a mission to preserve the coastal mainland and the marshland and the animals which live there. And one of the main aspects they blame of the horrific environmental changes that have been happening since the hurricane has been the overdevelopment of the region with wealthy housing developments being built. So they decide they're going to do something about it. And one of those things actually does include to like give an example of the extent they're willing to go. They take some revenge and vandalize one of the houses that are currently being built. So now it's the summer. It's when she meets Milo, one of the seasonal tourists that she despises at a party that as much as she tries to hate him, she starts to fall for him. Milo though is harboring a secret that could destroy everything though. This realistic novel in verse is part romance, part activism, part finding your passion, and it's when it will resonate with you all the way through. Don't call me a hurricane. Kent State. This unique novel in verse takes a look at the before, the during, and the after of one of the most dramatic moments in U.S. history that changed so much. It, yeah, okay, there's so much that came from this actual event at Kent State. Now, on May 4th, 1970, four college students were killed by the Ohio National Guard while protesting the Vietnam War on their college campus of Kent State. Told through a variety of viewpoints, okay, so if you like a multiple points of view, this one has that one as well, from the students that were killed to townspeople and leaders, you get insights and perspectives that is different from just the facts. You will be left wondering and trying to figure out what are your thoughts, your opinions, after being given information from all the sides and all the decision makers and that were involved in the situation? And you will be deciding for yourself what you would have done and what should have been done differently, if anything. Now, each voice is written in a different font type to kind of help you figure out which one is which. But I will tell you this, even though I, we're talking about like reading books, I do count audiobooks as reading. The audio of this book is amazing. So if you're looking maybe for an audio, you want to start try something new, or maybe you're just a fan, audio. Yeah, Kent State. Muted. Denver, Dolly, and Shock make up a girl group known as Angelic Voices, and they are just being, they are just waiting to be discovered, okay, for their big break. They think that this has happened when they are overheard singing outside of a concert by the singer himself. That would be Sean Mercury Ellis, okay? Yeah, okay, that's like our main character here. Yeah. Now, and they soon find themselves in his inner circle with him wanting to help them change their destinies and to bring them fame and fortune. Soon though, things start to change between Mercury and the girls and his controlling nature starts to appear. Soon the girls are divided with Denver and Dolly thinking that they need to do whatever he tells them because they have to land this deal. And then they're shocked, not feeling right about the situation. When the two girls, Denver and Dolly, move to Atlanta to be with Mercury, they will, and that is where he shoot, shows them his true colors and motives, they will find themselves on a journey that neither one of them could have imagined 
or thought at the beginning of all of this. Now this novel in verse is told through the uh, through Denver's point of view and it's one that provides insight into the dark corners of the music industry. Now please please be aware that there are descriptions and themes of physical and sexual abuse, rape, eating disorders, and there is mature content. At times it can be fairly explicit but it is essential to the story and the plot line and what happens. I will say there is going like at the end, it's like a, you know, type of moment at the end. If you like, a, if you like your novel on verse, if you like your books, your storylines to be a little more dramatic, maybe dealing with some tough topics, muted. Punching the air. So when 16 year old Amal and his friends get involved in a fight with a group of white boys, he is arrested and found guilty for assault as the rest of his friends are sent to prison as well as part of their plea deals. None of the white boys involved in the fight though get charged for their actions. We as readers get to follow Amal's experience through the juvenile prison system as he witnesses just how unjust the system is and how it changes individuals, including him. The only thing that Amal can count on is his painting and poetry to get him through this time that he is dealing with. In this novel and verse, you will be able to see through Amal's eyes, as well as examine your own thoughts and opinions about this real life situation and scenario that teenagers across the world find themselves in every single day. You will find yourself asking so many questions and not having or being able to find the answer to this current day topic, right? This is definitely one that is thought provoking. It is eye opening and it will feed you, it will, it will shed some light onto things that happen in our in our civil system every single day. Um, Ansel Salam is part of the Exonerated Five. He was part a uh, writer of this as Evie Zavoy. A powerful, a gut wrenching story, punching the air. We when we make it. So it's the 1990s in Brooklyn, New York, and 14 year old Sarai lives with her mom and sister Estrella. Now Sarai feels the pressure to be the first one in her family to make it. You know, to graduate high school, to go off to college, and leave the neighborhood. Okay, but not only is she feeling this pressure, but she also feels pressure from the community because she is, she's not being Puerto Rican enough since she was not born on the island. And, She's being torn in so many and pulled in, in all different directions and different forces. As we follow Sarai into high school, she's in eighth grade when we pick up with our story here, we experience life with her as she grows up from having to move from address to address because they don't have enough money to make the rent for that night to the fridge uh, missing, not having food in her fridge, to the struggles with her mommy's mental illness and a society that does not seem to understand her or who she is. Uh, Sarai is outspoken and honest throughout her journey of growing up. And if you ever feel like you're not good enough or your voice isn't being heard, you can totally relate to her story. Now, please be aware that this book does not shy away from tough topics such as sexual assault, pregnancy loss, drug abuse, domestic violence, but it's a breathtaking and gripping story. Again, it, I, it is considered historical given the fact that it's in the 1990s, okay? But, don't let that stop you. This is when we make it. And our last one is White Rose. So living in Germany, Sophie Scholl is expected to become a good Nazi. She joins many groups, including the Hitler Youth, as was expected during the 1930s and growing up in Germany. As she grows older, though, she starts to observe what is happening around her. She decides she needs to take a stand. And not just be angry about it. Being angry about it's not gonna do anything. You gotta do something. Knowing the risks, she and her brother Hans join the activist group known as White Rose. And they start to distribute pamphlets and other information about what is really going on in Germany and the actions being taken against the Jewish people. Their goal with all of this is to create an uprising of people against Hitler. They are caught though and are interrogated, tried, and sentenced to death. Now this novel and verse is based on a true story. Sophie and Hans and the White Rose, all of it, real people, real groups, real true events. So if you want a historical fiction novel and verse based on a true story, 
you got it right here. White Rose, Kip Wilson, the author, amazing. Highly recommend it, White Rose. So these are just six of the books that we have here in our library that are novels in verse. So I encourage you, try something new. Maybe you've never read one before. We got some amazing ones here. Maybe you're looking for a quick read to maybe get jumpstart your, you know, check the box that you've at least read your first book of the year right here. So come on out to the library. We have them or we have plenty of other novels in verse for you to find as well. I hope you have an amazing week and I hope you tune back next time for a whole new Teen Book Spotlight.